Hi, I'm Brian English, Rappler forum name Hyperbytes. In this module, we're going to look at um, how we can resend the code that is required for the um, registration process. So at the moment, we have a, um, a validate account screen. Um, they can validate it, but we need to allow them to be able to request a new code at the same time. And what, what we're going to do is we're going to only allow people to do that who are logged in. And the reason for that is that I don't like people being able to request a, uh, request a code via their email address. Because if somebody malicious wanted to uh, cause a bit of chaos and just keep constantly requesting codes, then uh, it would cause a little bit of a problem. So what we're going to do is in this stage, validate account we're going to tell them that if they have lost their code they need to log in and they will be given the opportunity to have the code resent if they're already logged in then we're going to have a button appear which will tell them um, or give them the opportunity to resend the code so back in the api actions i'm going to add a new action and i'm actually going to call this who am i and this is an action that we will I'll just move it into the folder there that we will be calling a lot because this is the um, who am I is something I'm going to build which will return um, the user's identity and also their authorities as well. So we'll start with the, the simplest bit of who am I and what we're going to do is we're going to go into our security provider, security identify, so we know who's logged in. I'm going to add another action going to ask us uh, it's going to be a database action single query query I'll start giving these a longer name because it very soon we'll start to get confused about which query is which query so that's query who am I we're going to create a database inquiry and what we're going to do is just ask for first name last name email and we're going to have a condition on that that the user ID must be equal to the security identity. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to call that action and that will return details of the currently logged in user. So I'm just going to save that. And what we'll do is say we'll be building on that who am I. So at any point within a um, App Connect page, if we need to know details about the logged in user, we'll be able to pull all of the information that we need um, about them from that action. But for the moment, we're just going to go into um, our validate account and I'm just going to link that action in now so that we have that data available in our App Connect page. So we'll just call it con who am I and let's just call that action there so we now know at any point within this page we can find out exactly who is logged into the system at that material time let's save that let's pop back into our workflows we're going to add a new API action and that's going to be send code now send auth code the reason is you notice there's one very very similarly named already that we have so what's that going to do well ideally what we should do is go through that generate a new code script that we wrote in the previous module generate a new code uh, for them and then send that updated code but as this is a training environment i'm just actually going to cheat i'm going to be lazy so you don't have to watch me going through that process and all I'm actually going to do is resend them the original authorization code that um, was set we say my recommendation would be that you uh, always generate new code almost forgot uh, let's take that out we need to add that um, security identify stage that we need to identify who's currently logged in now what we need to do is um, set up our query 
So we're going to go into add action as we did before. Database actions, single query, query builder. We're querying the user table. We want their authorization code for the person who is currently logged in. So that's user, user ID, who is the identity. This is actually something I had in earlier and it's actually been deleted, but I think I must have forgotten to save it. So uh, we'll just close that. Excuse me. I'm just going to save that. That should now be gone just to show that you would, wouldn't normally expect that second ID there. Yeah, that's how, that's what it should look like. Sorry, that's a bit of debug code that I had in there. Save that. So we've got their identity. We've got their authorization code. All we need to do now is to send it to them. Now, that's another matter because we're going to send it to them. We actually need to know who on earth we're sending it to. So I'm going to go back to that query builder. This is thing called thinking on your feet because we're going to need the name and the email address as well, of course. So we're saving that. We're going to now add an action step. We're going to go to mailer, send mail, subject your authorization code. So name, we'll just say website. Let's say you would normally probably put the full name of your website in there. Email address, we're using no reply at visit northtyne.co.uk person's being sent to is first name space last name and their email address is that email address that we pulled from the record so we know that's correct and then we're going to send them a message to say your authorization code is call on into our picker there make sure that you're at the end click on the lightning bolt and we're going to click auth code and then while we're busy we'll correct my terrible typing again so there we are we now have our it's going to retrieve who you are. It's going to get your details. It's going to send you your authorization code again to say, I would recommend normally that you generate a new code. Um, but in this training environment, we'll just keep it nice and simple for you. So that's our API action done. So we're going to go back to validate account now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a second button in over here, which will give the send code option. So what we need to do is we're going to have to add another column in here. Um, so if we add that in you'll see uh, a little situation oh dear it's uh, wrapped to the next part of the screen why is that well that's quite straightforward this column is set to two for anything from small upwards this column is set to 10 we are only allowed 12 columns in a bootstrap row so what all we need to do is to just drag that back down to five that's four so or we could have just simply typed over typed that uh, f number there and while we're busy let's just set that to a fixed five as well right if we're going to be technically right let's make them all the same put the from small upwards so we've got our second column in there all we need to do now is drop in a button I'm going to make that nice bright red so it's easy to see. I'm going to put resend code. So what we need to do now is to set a click event so that when that button's clicked, something happens. So just before we go any further, I'm just going to quit do a save. I tend to save quite a lot. What we need to do now is set a dynamic event. When there's a mouse click, and don't forget mouse click includes taps on uh, tablets and things like that. For some reason that hasn't done it, so we'll try again. Um, mouse click, that's better. And what we're going to do is I'm going to introduce you now to the concept of a flow. What's a flow? Well, a flow is basically very very similar to your server connect workflows 
but it's an app connect workflow um, so you can chain a number of commands uh, instructions in a list and when the click of that button happens that whole list will do it gives us more functionality than just cl clicking the normal picker so if we click on flows we'll see a very similar screen to experience over here I'm going to right click I'm going to add an action and what I want to do is I want to connect to this um, send auth code action we don't need to send any parameters because it's using who's logged in as the parameter so we can just simply say data sources server connect we can then select that data source to send auth code and that will call that action and generate that email automatically then I want to do one more thing I just need a bit of feedback for the user so they actually know what's going on so I'm going to go into flow control run and that's how we interface with the actions that we've set up within app connect within the the, the components within Wappler and what we're going to do is we're going to just use notify we use a success notification and we're just going to say code sent so now on the click of that button it should run that send code auth code action it should then pop up a little bootstrap notification saying it's sent and then the user can use that authorization code has anybody noticed the uh, error in logic or the, the the quirk of logic here um, have a little think about it for a moment and just see where whether you can realize where we've gone not wrong but where we need to just prevent something happening and the answer is simply that we've got a resend code button there that will send the resend the code to the logged in users however when we first register that user is not actually logged in so we need to do one of two things we either need to extend that registration process and log them in automatically or we need to hide that button when the user is not logged in <coughs> look in the pluses and minuses I think probably extending the registration process to log them in automatically would be the better option so I'm going to click on that register action and what we're going to do is after we've created that user so we've it's after that database insert there I'm going to add another action and all I'm going to do is I'm going to go security provider security login we're going to log in with the email address and the password and the remember flag and we're going to save that what happens is then when that person is registered it will actually automatically log them in after creating their um, record which means that from that point on they are registered within the system so when we come over to our validate options we know in all cases that that person will be logged in so what we should be able to do now is to be able to check that code and see that everything is working as it should so let's go right back to our um, registration process and let's take this right through from start to finish so I'm going to open register JS here and I'm going to run that actually no I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to just clear out my data again first the test data um, so I don't have to think of hundreds of different email addresses I could have really used the plus sign versions of them but uh, I'm not a big fan of that process to be honest right so we, we have clear database again we're going to find our register page we're going to fire that open in our web browser we're going to do Brian English our mail is going to be brian at hyperbytes.co.uk 
Our password one 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 we've read our terms and conditions and let's register that certainly worked okay our ps2 let's just check our emails now and see if we have a registration code that's come through there we are that's our registration code that's come through we are now logged in um, or should be logged in so we should now be able to hit resend code and that should send us another code certainly sent it, said that the code is sent uh, so let's have a look at our emails and sure enough we have another email come through with as it turns out that same registration code however obviously I recommended in a code that you actually use the extended version and recreate that so we can now enter our validation code 436 989 registered email address and validate our account no I keep doing that that's the wrong email address just shows that our verification validation works perfectly let's validate there we are that's logged in that should have validated that account and it should have um, created the role let's double check let's fetch our data there we are we can see our record is there with our encrypted password authorization code has been removed the validated field has been updated and we should see a role here to see that that person has been created and they have a membership role so that's exactly what we need to do that uh, process is working great before we go we talked about git before let's just now update all of those changes we've made just so uh, after send validate code let's commit those changes and now you can see we're starting to build a version history of our website if we need to revert back we can actually go and just say revert back to this commit and that will take everything back to where it was in the, uh, at that stage so we can reverse horrible changes if we would got something horribly wrong so there we are our next stage is just going to be primarily a bit of tidy up I think uh, we're going to be looking at adding some menus in um, to make the starts of our administrative console and then after that I think we'll move on to looking at search engine op optimization because it's not something that you think about later and graft on it's something that you really should be integrating right from the very start of your design so thanks for joining me on this module and I'm looking forward to you coming back and joining me in the next <laughs>